Uh, let me let me get in the truck here. Uh, hey guys, we are just wrapping up. We just made it back to Memphis. We got the Hellcat in the back of the trailer. We're getting ready to unload it and put it up to shop and go home and call it a, a weekend. We had a good weekend this weekend. Um, happy 426 day. We got Mr. Leon Epson. And all you guys know the Eplins when it comes to racing these Hellcats because they a big name to us, and they're really great people. Uh, me and Mike met Mr. Epland in Clay City, Kentucky last year in November when we went down there to uh, test on the track. And very nice gentleman. Uh, anybody you talk to, if you mention the Eplins, everybody knows, and they all tell you what great people they are. And I, I truly know that they are good people because I met him myself. Leon, we appreciate you taking time out of your day for us, sir. No problem, man. We, all of us in the garage, just working on the Hellcat, trying to get it ready for this week, next week, whenever we can get it out of the garage. Wow, they, they, it's 426 day, of course, and everybody seems to be working on their their Dodge or Hellcats, trying to get ready to race again. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, I mean, the grandchildren and my son, and me, we're I had to go to the, to the store and get him some snicker bars. He got a little rowdy a while ago. <laughs> I wonder if I... Maybe I could get away with paying Mike with snicker bars to work on my Hellcat. Or M&M's, one of the two. My name's Michael Moore, so, I mean, M&M's. That might just work. Um, we watched a video of Mr. Eplin's that, that Hellcat running 766 in Clay City. I watched one, one video of it. And the car launches up and it looks like a rocket about ready to take off. Uh, that would scare me half to death, I believe. I, I'm, I'm, I'm small beans compared to that kind of speed. Uh, tell us what it feels like, Mr. Eplin. Well, <clears throat> what most people don't realize is, you know, our car, I call it our car because it's, it's a family car. Our clutch lock up where it's a manual car, it locks up around the 60, 70 foot mark, and the increments on the nitrous is kicking in at the same spot. And if you don't kind of have it all going on at the same time, you can't really get a good ET out of it. So there's a lot happening out by the 60 foot mark in our car. And even changing it into second, um, which most of the time calms that car down, most people's car down, uh, it still sometimes has a big head of steam that don't want to sit back down. You just, you got to ride it out. Uh, it's, a, it's a life changing experience, believe me. <laughs> I can only imagine. I, I, I'll be holding on for dear life. I, I mean, them, them racing seats, you can't pinch much cushion with your rear end. So you just, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them metal racing seats that people ride in, and, and you know, I know that reducing weight on the car is important because that's how you get fast. And I've thought about it, but I always think, man, do I really want to ride around in a metal seat? You know, when I go race, I guess it's um, um, part of the hazardous duty of the job if you want to go fast, because I know I could drop probably a good, you know, 65, 60 pounds off the car if I just got the driver's seat out of there. Yeah, when you put the cage in one, uh, it's really tied against that driver's seat, and it tends to wear the driver's seat a whole lot, uh, especially when you're big as me and my son pushing on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it'll it'll wear our seat out in a hurry, uh, a cage wheel. You know, we've got a lot of bars in our cage, and added some more this winter for just special occasions. Yeah, well, uh, as fast as you're going, you most definitely need that cage. I mean, you're going super fast. I actually ordered a cage myself that I'm waiting to come in, and I'm going to install that in my car so I can actually be able to uh, play with the car here in town at my local track because they won't let me run without a cage. And then, of course, I got to get a... Did we lose him, Mike? No, he's still here. I thought I lost it there for a second. I heard something. It must have just been me, but... Um, so I'm gonna be able to try to race at home. It'll be it'll be fun to be able to run the car at home. And of course, I gotta I'm gonna have to get a parachute too because I'm only a mile and a half away from a mile and a half a mile and a half mile per hour away from going 150. So that that's next on my list also. Um, I'm not running as fast as y'all. I'm wanting to get into the eights 
and uh, you told me that you were probably more excited about getting into the eights than you were the sevens, right? It was an exciting time because uh, nobody had been there, and uh, <clears throat> it was a great effort. I think we run like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we run like a 16, nine O's before we ever got an eight. And uh, we actually went to Wisconsin uh, to do that in uh, November, uh, I believe it was, or to get some good DA and, you know, try to get the car to pull that number. Uh, at that time, we was, we was pretty stock at that time. You know, the motor hadn't been open. The supercharger hadn't been open. Uh, independent rear suspension was still intact. We didn't have all the fancy bushings. Everybody was just learning at that time back in 17. Yeah. Fall of 17. Yeah, uh, we, we learn from you guys. We watch what y'all do, and then we mimic what y'all do to get there. We get there a lot quicker and a lot easier, too. And uh, probably a whole lot less expensive for us since we find a ways to do it by listening to you guys. Yeah. The, um, I've seen guys that be right there at that 9-0 mark before, and it's so hard to get in them to get in them eights. And you, you said 16 times in a 9-0 of... That that's a lot of nine O's to have to deal with to try to get in that eight nine, you know, and get it get it over that next that hump, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah. And and I can appreciate it. I'm 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 my fast is a nine two O, and I, I'm trying to get a nine, trying to just touch the nine ones. And I think sometimes I know I could get there, and I think sometimes I make I make mistakes that prevents me from getting there, and I'm just learning myself. But I just got to keep chomping at the bit to get it, I guess. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a lot of it's in the 60 foot. You got to get that 60 foot down and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, I mean, um, I was talking to Mark Heddens yesterday and of course he told me I need to learn how to finesse that thing off the line a little better. I'm caveman in that thing a little bit too much. And um, I got I got to figure out how to drive a little bit better. So I'm going to work on that. And I've got, I've had some good 60 foots, but uh, I do agree with you. The 60 foot always seems to translate out all the way through the eighth and the quarter for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's they're in direct relation, that's for sure. That it is. And that, that Hellcat that y'all got is going fast, and I'm going to assume that it's probably going to get faster. Um, that I guess it, that's the goal, to keep going faster, huh? Uh, yeah, that's the goal. Um, I'd say... I'd say it'll be faster when it hits the track this time around. Uh oh, we got more coming down the pipe. Sounds like. Oh. Do Do y'all ever race race on that car, Leon, or is it just a a thing where you you going for times or what? Uh, no, we're actually building the car this year. Started building the car to run other classes, uh, where we can go to other events and uh, be legal with their event. So we've got actually a small tire for the car and a big tire for the car now oh okay we, we haven't done any motor modifications this winter because the motors held up great and um so we're going to just try to get it down the track again uh we changed the rear end because uh, the other one was breaking uh every once in a while and we just went a heavier duty 10 inch floater rear end this time around Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you, you, that's one thing about it. When you, the more power you go, you got to find parts that are going to be able to handle that power. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And you got to be able to put it to the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Eplin, um, I appreciate you taking your time out of the day, sir. It is a pleasure to talk to you. And, um, Mr. Eplin's got the Run for Cancer event coming up May 16th, right, Leon? Yeah, I need to get everybody out there. I mean, I don't care if they're a Chevrolet or Ford. Let's go support the event. That's everybody against Mopar. That's Mopar against the world, guys. You may have a Mustang like Mike does. Uh, I don't care. It doesn't matter what you got. Bring it out. Be a donk. It don't matter. Have a ha <laughs> have a fun time. Uh, it's for a good cause, guys. I think all of us have been touched by cancer. I mean, my mom passed away when I was 12 years old of cancer. You know, and and it it run it gets it's everywhere you know when everybody's dealing with it you know so let's go out for a good cause support the run for cancer show up we're planning on being there 
and uh, let's have a good time. Be safe. And uh, Leon, once again, thank you very much, sir, for taking time out of your day to be here with us. No problem, sir. Glad to do it. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, you have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Me and Mike's out, guys. It's been a great weekend. We had some good fun. Great times. Uh, thanks once again to John and Jessica. Simple Speed Performance. They took us in this weekend, and um, they didn't have to do that. Good, good folks do that for good people. Uh, talking to the Eplins, that's a family that works together. The whole family's involved in that race, and that's probably why that car goes so fast, because they've got a great team. Peace out. Have a great weekend. Happy 426 Day. See you guys.